Thank you for your interest in see and learn language and reading and for joining me in this presentation. Before we focus in on talking in some detail about the see and learn language and reading program, I'm starting the presentation with a discussion of common features across all our see and learn programs. They have common design features and I think they have some common developmental benefits. It's also important to, to just briefly look at how the programs fit together. We'll then focus in on the see and learn language and reading, why it's needed, what we know about language learning, how have we designed it and how you use it. Well, what is see and learn? Well, we've been developing see and learn practical programs now for several years in response to requests from parents and teachers. Over the years, we have uh, drawn together research findings. We've run early intervention services ourselves and we've shared the principles of our approaches in our presentations. But uh, parents and teachers have come back to us and said, be really helpful if we went a step further and actually provided the materials of the teaching programs. So that's what we've done. And at the moment, the see and learn programs cover language and early reading, speech, memory and number skills. So there are four separate programs and within each of those, there are a number of steps taking children through learning in developmental order. All our see and learn programs have some design features in common. So it's useful to look at these before turning to a specific program in more detail. Our approach to designing interventions is to start by looking at what we know about how other children learn. In other words, what do we know about how all children learn to talk or learn to count or improve their speech or their memory? Research tells us that children with Down syndrome build their skills in the same order. Once we have looked at what influences development for other children and what speeds it up and slows it down and interventions that might work if they're delayed, we then go to adapting um, what we've learned from that for the learning profile of children with Down syndrome. We draw on the research that has shown us that children with Down syndrome have a particular learning profile. They have strengths and weaknesses. And if we adapt our teaching to that, we may be more effective. All our programmes uh, have small steps and structure. We, we know at the outset that youngsters with Down syndrome are likely to have some cognitive de delay or learning, intellectual disability and therefore breaking tasks down into small steps, making sure there's a structure building in developmental order, and then providing plenty of opportunity for repetition and practice to consolidate learning. We also design them all to build on the children's visual learning strengths. We know that their ability to learn from things that they can see is better than their ability to learn when they're just listening. So building on visual learning strengths by always using clear pictures, print, uh, visual supports for learning and supporting their verbal learning weaknesses by making sure we use simple and consistent language that is focusing on what we want them to learn. All the programmes, because they involve individual structured teaching, or working with children in small groups. They encourage children to listen and develop their listening skills, to develop their attention, to be able to attend for longer periods of time and to concentrate on the tasks in hand. And these, this is important uh, for developing their learning and preparing them later for preschool and school. Very importantly, all the programmes are designed to be adapted to the individual child's needs. Children learn if they build on what they already know. It's very important that you can work through a programme at a pace suitable for the individual child. 
and that uh, the um, record sheets we provide and the guide and instructions we provide allow you to always be working at the child's individual pace. In addition, engaging in structured teaching activities and sitting down in one-to-one -one and small group activities, children learn a lot of behaviours which they use across all learning situations. They learn to listen, as we've said already, to follow directions, to respond to questions, they learn to learn by imitating and copying, by taking turns, they learn to initiate as we take turns, we can initiate, the child joins in, then the child has a chance to initiate, we join in. They learn to learn through playing with partners. We also try to uh, build into all our activities ways of teaching that supports success. Encour we, we are keen on errorless learning, prompting success in small steps, but then going on, of course, as children learn more to encourage problem solving, for them to persist and complete a task for themselves and have the pleasure of, of feeling competent and uh, what might be called mastering tasks and getting the self-reward of just completing them. All the programmes provide graded teaching activities in small steps and, the print, and in a printed kit or an app format. The materials in both are exactly the same, the illustrations are the same, so you could be using the printed kits in classroom and reinforcing that with app activities at home. They all have easy to follow instructions, guides that are the same, in, all the kit, in, in either print or app version of the kit, and very importantly, record sheets to chart progress. I've, I've underlined already that keeping a record allows you to make sure you know what the child's learned and you're just teaching the next step. I'll come back to that later. Also, all the uh, kits importantly include suggestions for consolidating and extending learning or what the teachers listening might think of as generalising. But extending learning into play activities and everyday activities at home or preschool. We know all children learn through all your interactions with them all day, every day, and those are really important. But we work on the principle that our children are slower learning and they will benefit from a short period every day of structured teaching that gives them that increased opportunity for repetition and practice to consolidate their learning. In other words, we don't think they will progress at the same rate without those periods of relatively intensive instruction each day. We're only talking about 15 or 20 minutes a day, but every day makes a difference. So the See and Learn Speech program is designed to improve speech skills and speech clarity. That's the clarity with which children can actually say words and sentences. It's improving their accuracy of production. The See and Learn Language and Reading program develops language by teaching vocabulary from very first words through to joining words together in sentences and learning the grammar, and then to improving children's ability to talk and join in conversations. It also includes activities to develop early reading skills for preschoolers. See and learn number is designed to teach the basics of counting and the first steps that children have to understand to understand the number system. See and learn memory is designed to improve children's memory. Now, children are doing all these things alongside each other in their early years. They're both learning to talk, improving their speech clarity, learning to count, improving their memory. So we will be encouraging you to use activities from each of these programs alongside each other for short periods every day. Having looked at features that are common to all our see and learn programs, now let's focus in on see and learn language and reading at the steps that are in it. Okay, now see and learn language and reading is predominantly a language teaching program. 
It's an evidence-based programme designed to help children learn first vocabulary, learn to use, so, so single words for talking, all children start at that stage, they use single words, they build up their vocabulary, and then they start putting sentences together, have to learn the grammar. Within the CNN Language and Reading program, we also introduce early reading because our experience is we can use early reading skills to support spoken language learning. The program starts at the earliest stages. What are the first words children learn? And, that, and children are starting to learn to understand and use first words from around a year of age, even earlier and continue, of course, to learn vocabulary right through their school years. And for children with Down syndrome, most of their grammar learning will be going on during school years. Now, before we jump into how we might be teaching spoken language, we need to be sure that everyone understands what the component parts are of learning to talk and being an effective communicator. Obviously, talking is for communicating um, and getting your message across. And for the little ones, the intention to communicate starts with looking, smiling, pointing, requesting, commenting, holding things up <coughs> okay, in a nonverbal mode. And we encourage all those things in early development for our children. And then they begin to realise, of course, that the words that they hear have meaning and you've got to crack the code, that all these different words people are using are to express meaning. So you have to learn vocabulary and we learn vocabulary right from the first year of life throughout our lives. Then we have to learn the rules for joining words together to convey meaning in sentences, so putting words together, understanding the grammar rules. And then when we understand the language and I want to talk, we have to ha be able to produce clear words and clear sentences. And that's underpinned by the speech motor system. <clears throat> and it takes time for all children. So what do we know about this system for children with Down syndrome? What do we know about their language learning? Well, first of all, it, it is delayed. It's, it's usually the most delayed area of their development and delayed relative to their nonverbal understanding. So we know it's an area we need to target. We'll come on in a moment to what some of the reasons for this gap between nonverbal understanding and understanding and using language might be. But let's look at those components. For most youngsters with Down syndrome, communication skills are good. They want to communicate. They learn vocabulary more slowly, but they steadily build it up so that by teenage years, they've used a range of vocabulary and can manage to get a lot of their ideas across. Their understanding, is ahead of what they can say. So communication skills and vocabulary are considered relative strengths, but grammar is more difficult. And very many children and teenagers and even adults are what we call telegraphic talkers. They're saying things like, me go France Tuesday, he sit chair. Instead of he is sitting chair, <laughs> oh dear, he is sitting on the chair, I am going to France on Tuesday. So you've got the key words, you'll understand what the person's talking about, but they're missing the grammatical joining words and word endings. And again, their understanding is ahead of what they can say, what they use when talking. And clear speech is very difficult. So many youngsters with Down syndrome understand a lot, have a lot to say, but are still not understood because they cannot produce the words and sentences clearly. And that's the speech part, and that is underpinned by speech motor systems in the brain. And speech is different from language learning. Okay. Language learning is learning vocabulary, learning to understand words, learning to understand grammar and using words and sentences to communicate. Speech is specifically whether we can do that clearly. So improving the children's ability to say words clearly, improving their articulation and phonology is what is the focus of the See and Learn speech program. That focus is purely on improving clarity of spoken word use. This program focuses on the vocabulary and grammar, teaching children to understand words, to increase the number of words they understand and to teach them grammar.
Now, I want to share with you a little bit of information from research, um, which explains why vocabulary learning matters and that the rate at which children are learning vocabulary matters. For all children, they start using single words. And when they have about 50 to 100 words that they can say, they start putting two words together and say things like more dinner, big dog, daddy gone. When they have something around 250 words or more, then they start to, to learn and to use grammar the possessive S, plurals, tense markers. Now, many children with Down syndrome in preschool, kindergarten, primary elementary schools, many of them will not yet have 250 different words in their spontaneous spoken language. And I'm going to show you that we have done some research based on the MacArthur Community Development Inventories research to look at these issues in children with Down syndrome and, and to why they matter. Now this graph gives you a snapshot of this information and all you need to, to know to interpret this is that we used uh, the MacArthur Communicative Development Inventories to collect this information on over 250 children with Down syndrome. And what the graph illustrates is our data in comparison with the data for typically developing children um, from the CDI. Along the bottom, we're plotting the number of different words a child can say. Up the side, you're plotting the grammar they're starting to use in their expressive language. Okay. And basically, you can see that if you look at the TD50 and the DS50 lines, they go straight across the middle, they're diagonal. And that indicates, of course, the more different words a child is saying, the more grammar they're using. There is a correspondence, more words, more grammar. There is also a very wide range of variation so the TDDS90 lines and the TDDS10 lines indicate outliers. That's the range. Some children are going faster with their grammar. Some are going a bit more slowly relative to the number of words they can say. But within those outside lines, that's the range of development. And it's very varied for all children at this stage. But basically, what this shows is the youngsters with Down syndrome are showing the same relationship between number of different words and spoken grammar as other children. Now, that's good news. The other thing I should draw your attention to, however, is that the children with Down syndrome in this study are three to eight year olds, whereas the, the toddlers represented in those blue lines our children between 18 months and three years. So our children are showing the same pattern, but it's taking them a lot longer to get there. And the important message from here, of course, is the more different words we can teach them, uh, the, the sooner they may be reaching the stage where they can understand and develop grammar. Now, what do we know about overall reasons for their language profile? Why should language development be falling behind nonverbal understanding? Well, one issue, of course, is hearing loss, that many young babies and preschoolers with Down syndrome um, have conductive hearing loss and recent research uh, has actually demonstrated a relationship between hearing loss in preschool years and spoken language in school years. We also know that the children have difficulty in verbal short-term memory. Now that's the listening memory system. It's, it's essential for learning to talk, for holding words, remembering words, uh, learning spoken words. It matters for vocabulary learning and it also matters for holding sentences to learn grammatical rules. So verbal short-term memory may matter, well certainly does matter and play a part. I've just shown you in the previous graph that uh, also the rate at which children are learning to say words matters. And that, so slow vocabulary learning may be delaying their ability to learn the grammar and use it. 
We know nothing of early speech discrimination in children with Down syndrome, but of course the ability to hear differences in words matter because you're going to need to hear the difference between uh, hat, mat, cat, men, pen, and so on. A lot of words that children are trying to listen to, learn and link meaning to only vary by a single sound. Okay, But the meanings of those words may be quite different. And we don't know very much about the causes of speech motor issues. But there will be an interaction um, between being able to produce sounds and how much you're talked to, being able to produce words and how much you're talked to. What can we do about all this? Well, we can use visual supports. We can use signs, pictures, print to make language visual to help overcome that verbal short term memory issue and hearing loss issues. So making language visual matters. And then it's about maximizing the opportunity to learn words. Children pick up the meanings of words like cat and hat. When mum says, oh, look, here comes the cat. Well, shall we put on your hat? Now, in, we expect children to learn the meanings of words embedded in sentences. And if a child's learning more slowly, it may be really helpful, of course, to, to make sure we teach the meanings of specific words, that we go about actually teaching vocabulary, not just waiting for children to pick it up in the course of everyday conversations. And for, for our children, we're pretty confident that more learning opportunities and more repetition and practice are needed, particularly um, for them. So how have we used this information to develop our language and, and reading programmes? Well, we're drawing on all the time research information that's published, but also we have been working at speech and language development in our early intervention services and through our research uh, for many years. So when we put together our see and learn materials, many of these we have trialled with children in our early intervention services and some of the videos coming up will show you that. So CLR language and reading then is focusing on learning to talk from learning first words through to short sentences and using early reading. We've adapted it for that learning pri profile. We know visual short term memory is an issue. We know we're going to need more repetition and practice. We know we need to put in visual supports. Okay. So putting all that together, we have developed a series of steps. And very importantly, as I said in the introductory slides, children learn things in developmental order. They learn vocabulary in an order we know a lot about. We know what the first 800 words children learn in most languages. Um, we can choose early vocabulary uh, from based on that research on early development. And we know how they go on to start using grammar, putting words together. So it's a strictly developmental approach. It's taking children through steps in the correct developmental order. So uh, we're laying the foundations and then building on that. I've already underlined really in what I've just said that it's small steps structure step by step support. First of all, for vocabulary development, um, to get a basic vocabulary together to get us to the stage of simple sentences and developing sentences and grammar. And we are going to go on um, with providing materials for much more of core vocabulary development. With all, with each step in the in the programme, record sheets, small steps, making sure you can go at the pace of the individual child. Okay. And uh, for all our materials, there's a UK and US English version for all the steps. And before we move from this slide, I'd just like to draw your attention to the picture. We're going to be teaching using matching, selecting and naming games and the pictures illustrate this and I'm going to go on to show you also some video clips that illustrate those activities. So when are children ready to start? Like all our programs this starts right at the beginning. Uh, the, the first vocabulary selects 
60 words from the first 120 words that children learn. And first vocabulary one is the new edition, which is an update and replaces see and learn first word pictures. So it's for children who are ready to learn their first words, show an understanding of objects and what they do, maybe attempting to communicate by babbling and using simple gestures, like to look at books and photographs and pictures. And this can be around 12 months of age, a bit earlier or a bit later. But um, keep talking. I mean, we would not underestimate children's readiness to begin to learn. And so talking to them, naming everything they're playing with, really important that you're naming everything that happens during their daily lives and not underestimating their ability to be ready to start to learn important key words simply because they have Down syndrome. We've identified already that uh, the steps come in both kit form and app form and that is just to reinforce and remind you that the uh, picture materials, the illustrations are the same, the activities are the same. So you can do activities with the real cards and you can practice and reinforce that on the apps if you have, if you, if you want to have both sets of materials. All the kits come with a clear guide and in that guide you have um, introductory information you have information about language development in the way we've just been talking about it and references to further research. So if you want to, you've got the info. If you want to read it, you've got the information on what we know about developing spoken language and how we've designed the materials and activities. And then the guide moves on into giving you absolutely precise step-by-step -step instructions for the teaching activities. And uh, the, act, the guide pr provides activities for using the printed kit materials and the app version alongside each other. And for each activity, these really are step-by-step -step precise instructions and with record sheets so that you can record the, the words that you're working on and you can record your child's progress in small steps. Now recording is really important. All, all, all our materials are designed so you work at the pace of the child you're working with. You go at the pace of the individual child. You record when they've learned. You record the next step that they need to do to consolidate and develop their learning. So the newly revised uh, Editions uh, of our vocabulary teaching materials allow you to select words, teach words in the order you think your child will be interested in. And the record sheets are really important. It, it, it allows you to identify the words you're going to work with, to keep a record of that. It helps you structure what you're doing. So if you do purchase the app version, um, my advice is the first thing you do is print off the record sheet. Okay. In the kit version, of course, you get a printed record sheet. Now, First Vocabulary 1 teaches 60 first words using 48 pairs of picture cards. And the other 12 words, we give you instructions for teaching during the activities because they're words that it isn't easy to picture. The words selected are based on the research on early vocabulary and the words that are in children's first uh, words and designed for that very early stage. Now, importantly, the activities we use, uh, there's four activities, looking at pictures, matching pictures, selecting pictures, naming pictures. Now, I'm just going to describe that where you can look at that uh, photograph of that child on the screen. Um, the first step, looking at pictures, is to sit with your child look at the pictures, name them, and especially when you're starting with the very little ones. You can be going through the pictures, look at them, name them, and we have instructions for doing that. Then the real teaching starts when we get into matching, selecting and naming. Now, the first step is just to encourage your child to match pictures, to put the sheep with the sheep, using the example in the picture, 
And all the child needs to be able to see is they're the same. But all the time they're matching, and most young children find matching easy. You'll see that in the next video clip. All the time they're matching the picture, they're learning the word. You are saying put sheep with sheep, put cow with cow. So the matching stage is teaching them which word goes with which picture, teaching comprehension of the words. The next step is to begin to test their understanding. So now we're going to put out pictures of a sheep, a cow, a pig, a duck, and ask the child to give me pig or point to, to show me pig, show me cow. Now they are demonstrating their learning these words. They are learning to associate the correct word with the correct picture. So they're developing correct comprehension of basic meanings of these words. You will find that many children can um, uh, demonstrate understanding of the words quite a while before they can either sign or say them. So the last stage is naming pictures. Can they say sheep, cow, pig? Uh, but they may show their understanding well before they're able to name. So we will teach in these steps, matching, selecting, naming, and you will see the, this is a very powerful set of activities for teaching all sorts of things, including colors, shapes, numbers, sentences, and so on. Now the next picture clip, the next video clip illustrates picture matching. And well, while you're watching it, notice how much this little boy is enjoying the activity and how much his mother's praising him. This video and the ones that follow in this presentation are all filmed in our early intervention service a few years back when we were developing these materials. We were using these approaches with our children and then we were planning to develop the see and learn materials. Um, so the examples you see of pictures, words, books are not the final sealer materials, although some are prototypes. Also, sometimes children are demonstrating a step which they've already uh, mastered. Um, however, the, the videos should help you see what matching, selecting and naming is about. The picture matching video that comes next, it shows matching. I'm illustrating selecting and naming later when you see children working with printed words. Good boy! Good boy! <gasps> so he'll probably do this as sprint, won't he? Sprint! Sprint! Good boy! Well done! Good matching! Good matching! Good matching. Now I've highlighted the importance of keeping records and here are examples of the record sheets in first vocabulary. The first one uh, example here allows you to record how your child is progressing with matching pictures. You will see again it's small steps. We've introduced it. Um, we've demonstrated how to match and the child's able to match with some help with you prompting and perhaps guiding their hand to put the picture with the correct matching picture and then later the child's now able to do this independently without any help and for all our activities we identify the small steps 
breaking the task down into small steps and also recording each step in their learning. Um, the record sheet in the middle is for naming pictures. I've got these around the wrong way, haven't I? The far one is selecting pictures. The next step, it should be matching, selecting and naming. The next step is selecting and again introduced. Can they select the right picture with a prompt? Can they point to the right one with a prompt? Can they do it independently? And then naming, are they signing the word? Are they imitating the spoken word? And can they say the word independently when you haven't just prompted it? Now, those steps matter. Many children at this early vocabulary stage will learn signs, and that's really helpful. It's demonstrating that they understand what they're learning, uh, and they can uh, produce a sign before they can manage to produce a spoken word. Signing should always, of course, be accompanied by the spoken word because the aim is, is to get them talking and to use signs as a bridge to talking. They start to produce spoken words in imitation. You say, you say dog, child attempts to copy. So you'll see, and that's a really important stage, once they'll use their voice, once they imitate words, we, it's a, in our experience a very important step. Once they start to imitate spoken words, they will move ahead with spoken words. So very important when you say, do you want to, uh, would you like a juice and child imitates juice, but even more important, of course, when they come in the kitchen and ask for juice without you saying anything. So they've now thoroughly learned this word, got it stored and they can use it spontaneously, independently. Moving on then, we have published two further um, vocabulary teaching programs, first vocabulary two. This one teaches another 60 words, 52 of them illustrated with picture cards. And they, again, the full contents listed on the website, all the vocabulary we're teaching. So now it's designed for children who already have 50 or 60 of those earlier words taught in first vocabulary one. So if they completed first vocabulary one, they'd be ready to move on. Their comprehension is likely to be way ahead of their production. So if they understand most of those 50 or 60 words, even if they're only saying or signing 10 or more of them, we would move on. There's going to be a gap between the number of different words you're confident your child understands and the number they can sign and say. We don't want to hold back continuing their understanding of more words. So we'll, have, we'll be carrying on with targets for teaching them to understand more words while at the same time you'll still be working in first vocabulary one at that last stage of naming you'll be trying to you'll be working at moving words the child understands and consigns to words they can say so i hope i've made that clear you you can move on to teach new words in comprehension while you're still getting words they understand on vocabulary one into production words they can say. I've, we've given a rough guide that the stage at which children understand 50 to 60 words may be at around 24 months, but there's huge variation. So some children may understand, reach that level of understanding earlier, some will get there a bit later. But because you're using record sheets, you will uh, know when to move forward for the individual child that you're working with. And then similarly, CNN vocabulary three and further 60 words and 54 of those are pictured. And so again, it's it, you can move on when children understand something like an 80 plus of the words in the first two kits. The same thing applies. It doesn't matter if they don't say or sign them all. If you're sure they understand them, they can select them correctly from a choice when you vary the pictures that they're going to choose from. If you're confident they understand the words, you're going to move forward. And again, we've given a guide that this might be at around 30 months of age, but there is a lot of variability. So some will get there earlier, some later. Of course, these programs, these materials can be used with older children who are not yet saying all of these words. And one of the ways you can determine the range of words your child already knows, if your child is now three, four, five or six and still at this stage of vocabulary learning, 
then I would recommend <coughs> you you look at the DSE vocabulary checklists on our website. We designed, after we did that piece of research I've shown you, showing there was a clear link between the number of different words a child can say and developing grammar. A, a father was in an audience when I presented that data and he put up his hand and said, OK, I believe you. Now, what's the first 400 words I need to teach my child? Well, of course, that was exactly the right question to ask me. And it led to me going back to our centre and for us designing our vocabulary checklists. They're based on the MacArthur Communicative Development Inventory Research with their permission. And we've also drawn from the Hannon programme in Canada with their permission. So those checklists, there's three vocabulary checklists, one, two and three. Um, you can use those as an assessment tool. They're for parents to complete because parents usually know more and hear more language at home and know more about what their children understand and can sign and can say. There's a column to record whether your child understands the word, whether they sign it, whether they say it in imitation, whether they say it spontaneously. So if you've got an older child, as I said, at three, four, five or older, and you want to know how many different words that child already understands and can say, use our vocabulary checklists. And I've already told you, the three checklists cover an 800 word vocabulary. That's considered a core vocabulary that children need for talking in sentences. It has the grammatical words, it has verbs, nouns, adjectives, prepositions, articles, and so on. That core vocabulary of 800 words is really important. And many children will be learning many of those words in school. So I really would urge you to have a think about that. So that, that's guidance for older children um, using our vocabulary checklist to decide where to start. And then, of course, you can look at the lists of vocabulary in our different kits on the website. And we are going to go on to do more vocabulary kits and it'll be the same. We'll list all the words in them. We're, we're hoping to do materials to take you at least to that 800 word stage um, later this year. Now, if you are at an early stage and you're working in a service, we have we are putting materials together. Um, if you buy a bundle, so we've put our first vocabulary one, two and three together, you can buy those as a bundle and of course save money on, on buying them individually. I've mentioned the checklists already. You'll find those on our website. So let's move on to talk about first phrases one and a focus now on getting children to join words together. Well, now we're working at these stepwise. So there's a first phrases one, two and three shortly to follow. First phrases one draws on vocabulary learnt in vocabulary one. If you remember, I told you once children have between 50 and 100 spoken words, they start to join words together. So a child working in vocabulary one who's got that vocabulary may well be at a stage where they can demonstrate they understand two key words together. They can give Dolly a drink, put Teddy to bed, find the big dog. So with early vocabulary, children begin to demonstrate they can link two ideas together and want to join two words together. So I'll repeat, first phrases one uses vocabulary from vocabulary one, first phrases two, vocabulary from vocabulary two, first phrases three, vocabulary from vocabulary three. It focuses, first phrases focus at moving children to that two key word stage of language development, understanding and using two key words together. But this is the point at which also we start to introduce early reading. And first phrases teaches children to read 16 sight words, which we can then use in phrases. There's uh, eight books to practice examples of the different phrase types. When children move to putting two key words together, they use a range of two key word constructions which are well documented. And again, the evidence is our children with Down syndrome want to express the same different range of ideas. They want to put two words together. Um, 
to to express the same range of meanings and there are something like nine different types of two keyword phrases um, which we are endeavouring to teach across these first phrases kits. So to just be quite specific, see and learn first phrases is designed for children who understand at least 50 words, including nouns and verbs, can say and sign some of those words they understand, can follow those two key word instructions, wash dolly, put Teddy to bed, and who've completed see and learn first vocabulary one. And there's an illustration of the kind of two key word phrases we're going to teach. Dog, dog is eating, cat is eating. Dog is sleeping, cat is sleeping. Now, importantly, we're going to introduce reading. Now, we came to looking at reading for children with Down syndrome a long while ago. And we've been teaching children with Down syndrome for a long time. Importantly, the, the very first research we did, our attention was drawn to the fact that many children with Down syndrome can actually learn to read and remember sight words from as young as three years of age or younger. The very first child I taught to read, learned to read 30 words at two and a half years of age. And we have all this, we've documented all this over the years. Now, I stressed already earlier, we know that learning from listening is difficult and that the children's ability to learn visually, their visual memories are better. And that may be partly what explains their ability to remember printed words. They often seem to find it easier to remember printed words than spoken words. And of course, if we're teaching them to read, you're linking the two together. They're seeing a printed form for the spoken word and that visual support may help them to remember the spoken word. So at the stage, we want children to know words are for communicating. We want children to get that basic early vocabulary, 50, 60, 100 words, and to be communicating using signs and words, to know that words are for communication. Then when we move to the stage where we want to join two words together, that is when we introduce um, teaching them sight words to support that. Okay, we could and we select the words based on their language development. Of course, that's very obvious in these see and learn language and reading materials. The content of language and reading is based on how children learn to talk. What early words, how do they put words together? And then we're going to teach children to read those words. So we're keeping, we're using the reading to develop the spoken language. It will also, of course, mean they will have a basic sight vocabulary that helps them to go on to learn to read. Okay. It's important to also point out that um, when we make little books, when we encourage children to learn to read, but when we make little books, these books help us practice language with the children. So even where children are not yet interested in or remembering the printed words. We can still use all the materials in these language and reading kits to go on developing their spoken language. You can sit together, read the books, encourage the child to repeat the sentences with you. So all the materials can be used to continue to develop the spoken language of those who are not yet beginning to read. Like the vocabulary kits, the phrases kits have guides structured in the same way. Guides that now discuss um, the stage of language that we're at, joining words together, teaching sentences. And now, um, again, with the background to that, what we know about how children do that and all the activities specifically set out with, with simple step-by-step -step instructions telling you exactly what to do. And there are examples of those step-by-step -step instructions. Okay. And again, showing the cards in use alongside the app versions and telling you exactly what language to use so the language you use is consistent for the instructions that you're going to give. Now I'm going to show you a series of video clips because 
despite what I've said, that some children won't be um, perhaps not ready or sufficiently interested to start to learn to read at this stage. I do want to stress the fact that we find many children can and it is about confidence and about stepping them through the activities and you may be very pleasantly surprised. So the next video clips illustrate children learning to read sight words and these children, some of these children are under three years old and they go up to four year olds. The first two clips show children matching words, the next clip selecting. So remember I said to you, we've shown you matching pictures, but we didn't have a video clip for selecting and naming pictures. You're now going to see matching words and selecting words. And then in the fourth clip, the child naming words, he's saying the words and posting them in a uh, box, which makes the activity even more fun. Um, the, the children may not always be easy to understand until you've listened to them more than once for the reasons we've already outlined. Developing clear spoken language is a challenge. But note that in all these video clips, the children are with their parents and that in these mums are quietly prompting success and keeping children on task and we really encourage this errorless learning approach if a child's about to make a mistake we will move the card forward so they pick up the right one or point to the right one we don't say no that's wrong we're quietly prompting success and trying to keep them on task and that's partly what we referred to is some of the introductory slides we think is an important approach and again it's described in the instructions for it. This is mummy. Can you find the word the same? Have a look. Can you look at the card for mummy. Have a look. Have a look. Mummy. Which is the same? Which is the same? Good girl. That's mummy. And this one? How about this word? This is daddy. Daddy. Good girl. Which is the same, mummy? Have a look at the words. Have a look at the words. We're finding the word the same. Daddy. Good girl. And this is Eva. Eva. Which word is the same? That's Eva. You're right. And there's one more. This is Monique. Good girl. That's Monique. You finish. That's clever. Perfect. If I put all right, which one says cat? That's it, give it to mummy. Thank you. Hold on, hold on. Katie. Hold on, hold on. Katie. Which one says ball? Katie. It doesn't say it says Teddy. Which one says ball? That's it, give it to mummy. Put it away. Thank you. Put it away. No, too much to do. Ready? We
You've seen in the video clips young children learning to match, select and read words. Now, one of the things we ensure from the very start of teaching them to read is that they do understand what they're reading. So uh, in all our activities, we have a comprehension activity and this requires the child to read the printed word put it on the correct picture from a choice of pictures. And then we would do the same with reading sentences. Read the sentence, put it on the correct picture. Now, the first video clip you're going to watch shows the child reading two keyword sentences. Uh, the, the boy is swimming or the girl is drinking, are the kinds of examples. <clears throat> and then choosing the right picture from the choice. He has to be able to read both keywords and process the sentence correctly in order to choose the correct picture. And the, the screen on this slide illustrates that. To make sure a child has to read dog is eating and process both the keywords, we need four distractor pictures. We need a cat that's eating, a dog that's eating, a cat that's sleeping and a dog that's sleeping. So to really test two word comprehension, you're going to be selecting from four pictures or more. Okay. In the second video clip, the child matches words, reads the sentence and then shows a comprehension with, with her signs as she's doing that and then acting out the meaning with toys to take what she's been learning into play activities and real life activities. The boy is eating. Which picture? The boy is eating. Good boy. The boy is eating. Good. You read that one for me. Which picture? Good boy. That's exactly what we wanted. He's drinking. Good. Um, try this one. Oh, wow. It's yummy. Can you find the word the same? Good. Wash. And this word says, have a look. Dog. You're right. Which word is the same? There. Now, shall we read the sentence? What does it say? Wash the dog. You're going to give the dog a wash? <sighs> wash the dog. Good girl. Give him a wash. What does it say? It says, wash the dog. Clever girl. Very good. Oh, wow. Before moving on to talk about the next clips, You've just watched two children doing comprehension activities. And I'd like to just say a couple more words. And that is um, the ability to read and understand what you read is supported by your language understanding. So it is very important to recognize that a child with Down syndrome with delayed language and verbal short term memory issues is going to have is going to be challenged when reading with understanding. They may learn to read all the sight words and be able to read those aloud accurately, but to process that at the same time and to process it for meaning is going to be a challenge. Therefore, we need to be very careful to understand that from the start and make sure that everything we ask them to read, they are able to understand. So moving on, in the next clips, you're going to see book reading in the first clip, the child is reading a book that has the same phrases as in the, uh, one of the books in first phrases one. That is possessive phrases, whose ball, dog's ball, cat's ball, and so on. 
Um, and uh, the book is a prototype for the materials that we developed. In the second clip, the child is reading from a personal book his mother has made for him. Now we're providing language and reading activities in see and learn language and reading to provide a range of examples and to carefully link reading to language development. We hope it will also encourage you to develop more materials at each level of difficulty. We can show you the way to do it and give you examples of phrases and sentences that are appropriate as you move on. But of course, once you've got that structure, you would use it in lots of different situations with different nouns, verbs, adjectives and so on. So we want you to think about that and make more materials at the same level of difficulty, particularly using examples from your child's own world, because that is what they're really interested in. It means you will be using, you'll be teaching the words for things they want to talk about and things they experience in their own lives. Look. Yeah. Well, look and look at this book, because this book is whose ball? Do you know whose ball this is? Dog ball. That is the dog's ball. And whose ball is that one? Whose is that one? Dog ball. That's the dog's ball. Who do you think that one is? Whose is that one? Cat ball. Cat's ball. So that must be? Teddy's. Teddy's ball. Teddy's ball. That's right. Shall we read it? What does it say? Teddy. Teddy's book. Oh, good girl. No. What else has it got? The, the cat. Cat. Oh, jump up. He is jumping up. What does it say? It says, meow. <laughs> it does say meow. Shall we read it though? Sit down. Sit down, I say. Because you can't read the book, can you? Ready? It says the. The cat. Cats. Me. It's not asleep. The cats. Me. The cats. Ball. Ball. Good girl. Dog ball. The. Dog ball. Dogs. Ball. Good girl. Yeah, I done it. Again, we have record sheets in the uh, same sorts of formats as in all our, our kits. So here's examples of the first phrases, one record sheets. The first one is matching sight words. And again, you can see the steps introduced, matched with prompts, matched independently. Then reading the sight words, introduced, imitates, you read it, child copies you. Then the stage where they can look at the printed word say it, read it independently, say the correct word. Uh, with the third example here, we've now moved to comprehension activities. And that is uh, for phrases. Can they read the phrase, put it on the right picture from an appropriate choice of pictures? You'll also have an understanding words record sheet because the activities um, are going to go through learning to read the individual words, check the child's understanding of those words before you're going to get to the stage where you're reading phrases and checking their understanding of. Now we, we will be producing see and learn first phrases two and first phases three in the coming months. We will also be updating and producing a new edition for see and learn sentences and grammar one that will be what used to be called see and learn first written sentences. 
This step teaches children to understand and use sentences that have three key words. So now, instead of uh, talking about the dog is eating, dog is eating his dinner, Emma is eating an apple, three key words in the sentences. So going from two key word phrases into three key word sentences. Um, in this kit, we teach another 16 sight words and we use uh, eight of the sight words they've learned in first phrases one. So there's 24 words in this kit being used to make sentences. And uh, we have uh, brought this to life by filming children, taking pictures of children in activities. And you have four books to read to practice a range of sentences. As I've stressed when talking about uh, first phrases one, you can use these reading books to support spoken language development for those who are not yet reading. You read the sentence, encourage your child to imitate the sentence with you. OK, so the books are a structure for uh, uh, learning and practicing three keyword sentences. And the activities are the same as in the first phrases kits. We're going to be for the reading, matching words, selecting words, naming words, and then matching words and sentences to pictures to ensure that we're reading with comprehension. Now we have in the pipeline uh, further kits in development. And this slide just indicates to how these steps through vocabulary, phrases, sentences and grammar are linked. So see and learn first vocabulary, which we've talked about. The vocabulary there is, it is used in see and learn first phrases. So in other words, see and learn first phrases draws on vocabulary the children should have learned in first vocabulary one, because at that stage, children with 50 to 60 words they understand or more may be ready to join two words together and understand two keyword phrases. Similarly, first vocabulary two will link to first phrases two. We should build on the vocabulary from vocabulary two in developing first phrases two. Similarly, first phrases three will draw vocabulary from first vocabulary three. And then when we step on into see and learn sentences and grammar, we will continue with these links. Sentences and grammar one draws on what's learned in first phrases one and so on. Sentences and grammar two draws on first phrases two. Sentences and grammar three draws on first phrases three. We have further steps planned and in development, and hopefully they will be coming soon over the coming months. I've mentioned already we're going to do more vocabulary kits. We want to produce see and learn vocabulary and sight work kits, one, two, and three, to increase, to provide you with more materials for increasing children's vocabulary, drawing on the 800 word core vocabulary we know most children learn. And that core vocabulary is what they need for talking in basic sentences. Okay. And along with that, we will be producing the sight words. We'll have materials to teach the child to understand new vocabulary and to read uh, the, the sight words that go with it. Um, we will be working here uh, almost certainly teaching vocabulary in themed sets. And that's another step where as children begin to develop their vocabulary, they build what we call knowledge networks. They link vocabulary together, all their animal names, all the words you use at the beach or the zoo. So we begin to link vocabulary by meaning into networks and to understand categories like animals, birds, clothes. Okay. So we're going to bear in mind increasing knowledge networks, increasing the depth of understanding vocabulary uh, as we develop put the vocabulary together for vocabulary and sight words kits. And then we're also going to move into extending the early reading instruction to an early program for see and learn letters and sounds based on some research we did a few years back with our four year olds, introducing them to learning the sounds that go with letters and how sounds work in words with simple short words in sets. And then see and learn blending, which will also draw on research that we've done and published in terms of looking how looking how to 
put in additional visual supports and additional visual steps to teach children to understand how to blend sounds together to get to the word. Um, segmenting, realising how to sound out letters like k, a, t, it's not so difficult, but going from that to working out it's the word cat, that's the blending stage. And so we are going to uh, produce some materials. The letters and sounds and blending kits will be stepping stones into the kind of phonics programmes that are in school, which may go a bit fast and be a bit difficult for our children. Finally, I should probably say a few words about how see and learn reading and our reading and language intervention for schools uh, work together. Basically, the reading we're introducing in see and learn language and reading is early reading, establishing a basic site word vocabulary, choosing that to support spoken language learning, as I hope I've explained clearly. It's a pre it's a preschool program. Now. Our, uh, the, the, what children learn using the see and learn language and reading is they, they will acquire a basic sight vocabulary and they will have some basic reading skills in place when they go into school. Our reading and language intervention is designed to be used from year one in school, the year in which children are going to be six year olds in, in our system. And from that stage, we have demonstrated this structured, balanced reading and language intervention, combining book reading with phonics and sight word teaching is very effective. And the five and six year olds made the most progress. The children in our research study where we started there were definitely ready to learn to read with a comprehensive reading program, small step structure, but otherwise based on best practice principles and similar to instruction for other children. So we consider see and learn an earlier starting point. Okay, so see and learn is going to set some basic vocabulary, provide some simple reading books. Um, and indeed, some of our see and learn reading books and early sight vocabulary were used by schools for the complete beginning readers starting on RLI. So there can be a little bit of an overlap, um, but I hope that helps you to see that if you're talking about school age children, we wouldn't be considering our see and learn language and reading program as a reading program for school age children. We said at the start of this presentation, that we moved into developing materials and, and detailed step-by-step -step teaching programs um, because parents and teachers and therapists suggested they would be helpful. If your child has a speech and language therapist, obviously we hope they will encourage you to use that, these materials and support you in telling you at what stage your child has reached and what sounds and words are appropriate. Uh, and this will be very helpful. However, we know that most children with Down syndrome live in parts of the world where there is limited access to any kind of speech and language therapy or expert advice. And we have therefore designed all our programmes so that we hope that there's enough information for parents, carers, nursery nurses, preschool staff, classroom staff to use these materials to work every day in small steps to support children's development. And finally, this last slide just provides you with links. If you go to the See and Learn website, there's a lot more information on the language and reading pages. Please consider joining our Facebook group if you haven't already, um, because uh, that's a very good way to ask us questions and get more advice. If people post questions to the Facebook group and we can answer them there, uh, then they get shared with other people who probably have the same questions. And we, ha we are a small group with limited resources, so it's really helpful if you could use our Facebook groups to get advice. And then there's also the information there um, for how to go to our stores to purchase the materials. So thank you for listening. Uh, and I hope uh, you found the presentation interesting and it's encouraged you to use these materials with the children you're working with.